One of them carved up Zoru's whole squad. So let's leave it. And let the goblins have it? No. We take it to... Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad, twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. Holy hells! Another one! They tied, I miss her. Amaze. Come, I miss her. Now. Enough gawking. Get me down. Never. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. You will join me. We must find a crash. Our people possess the cure for this infection. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. You are full up. Dismiss your weakest warrior. Very well, but heed my words. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. I must interrogate this Zoru. Our very lives depend on it. I will be at your camp. Do not keep me waiting. I hear shouting up ahead. We should check it out, but be careful. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins hear? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! The nine hells! Open the gates!
support. the last of them. Inside! All of you! More may follow! Open the gate! There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too? Unbelievable! Tell that to the dead at the gate. Shut it, horns! I'd be lying dead next to the goblins if you'd stalled any longer. My duty is to this camp. Oh, God forbid you risk your precious tale. But I shouldn't be surprised. Foul bloods ain't known for courage. You see the tiefling's jaw clench. He's about to erupt. You're right. There's too much at stake. Worried about your precious eyes, the both of you. Enough! Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. Forgive that display. Aradin's a blowhard, but that's no cause for me to join him. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve. There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. Goblin got you. The druid Halsin's a renowned healer, but he didn't make it back from Aradin's expedition. If it's not too serious, you could try his apprentice, Nettie. She's with the other druids in the inner grove. They've withdrawn there to prepare this damn ritual of theirs. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, 
And she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. Really? We're messengers now. We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. He's not breathing! Go find a healer! It's too late. He's gone. Someone's going to pay for this. Arka, no, wait! What are you doing? You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way! She didn't kill your brother, Arka. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tieflin. If you ever had it to begin with. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You gonna kill her too? <laughs> you, move! You fought for us, so I'll give you one last chance. Move! Cannon would hate me for this, but he's not here. They took him from me. Don't you dare! Damn you. Damn it! Why do you care if a goblin lives or dies? Can't say I understand that. Not sure I want to. It's all right, Arca. Let's go. Ain't sure why you're protecting me. <laughs> Don't care, neither. It's too late to make friends warg me. My tribe's coming. They're gonna burn this pretty place for the glory of the Absolute and hang you by your guts. Goddess. We're burning her name across the face of the world, we are. The absolute is gold from the sky, she is. The blessing in the storm and the storm itself. My tribe can tell you everything there is to know. Absolute bless one of our own. Priestess Gut got a whole lab set up. Cooks up potions that fix our lads, no matter how much of a beating they take. Could probably stick your head back on if someone was to chop it off. <gasps> Mighty Booyog. A goblin healer. We really are desperate, aren't we? Get me out of here, and I'll tell you where to find her. Deal?
up and do it. My tribe ain't as friendly as I am. The edge Tiring of business, head. isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break? Hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something. Well, rather important. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you stood in front of a crossbow to prevent a murder. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with, though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. Oh, staffs, tomes, cowls, the form doesn't matter, so long as it's brimming with weave. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, and before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital, dare I say it, critical. Fair point. However, until recently, I was able to rely on a supply of artifacts stored in my tower in Waterdeep. A supply that has now run dry. The reality of the matter is that a lone wizard with a chronic impairment such as my own is not in the most ideal of situations with regards to self-defense. The manner of artifacts I need are not often found waiting patiently on a shopkeep's shelf. One usually has to lift them delicately from trap-filled tombs or prize them from the hands of violent ne'er-do-wells. There'll be danger involved. Or great cost. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession, primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. Step, parry, strike, damn it! It's just not... Ah. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I've never, just never seen your... Your face is... Well, I, sh I should get back to it. Nothing but. Goblins in the wild, out for blood, and the druids in here looking to kick us out. Or worse. We need to be ready for a fight. But I'm useless for the sword. Ha, uh, Haratha, Jack, and swing! Yes! You really know what you're doing. Uh, found this by the road. Bet you'll put it to good use. Oh, yes. When the time comes, it'll be nothing but battle cries from me. I'll suffer embarrassment so long as I survive. I just hope the druids won't make that harder than it is already. But I'll keep at it. Thank you. The Blade of Frontiers. 
<laughs> what a thrill for the children. <laughs> They're tough kids. Smart, too. The future's in good hands. Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. I can't do it. I'm not like you. Umi, I don't need you to be like me. You just have to buy enough time to run. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. Hmm. You're on the right path, Umi. Go on now. Practice what you've learned. Well met. The Blade of Frontiers at your... The man's smile bends downward. And his thoughts become yours. You are the Blade of Frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe hell. <sighs> Hell's great fires. You are on the ship. Hmm. Doomed to shed our skin and become a lithid, or so the stories go. But we haven't sprouted any tentacles. Not yet, anyway. Could just be good luck. I'm not so... Your minds collide once more. Will chases the fiend ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil. A threat to the living. Evil incarnate. Shit! You saw her. Advocatus Diaboli. Advocatus Diaboli. A devil's advocate. A champion in the blood war between diabolical forces and demons. That ship sailed the sticks already. All I can hope for is to limit the damage. Her name is Karlak. An archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship, but the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now, preying on the innocent. I don't kill her, she'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. An excellent suggestion, but your party's full up. Still, when the time comes, call for the blade. I won't be long to answer. A splendid plan. We'll talk more there. Hells! We can't just leave! They're kin! I'll not gamble our lives, our futures, on people who are as good as dead. We must leave for Baldur's Gate at once. Can we all just take a moment, please? What's the point in blazing spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay! These people aren't fighters. We can help! Or yell louder. That's fine too. Thank you. It's the right thing to do, and you know it. She's right, Roland. We're better than this. Zerg. Fine, I'll stay too. Lest you both end up with your throat slit by Goblin Blade. Thank you, Roland. Whoa. Hey. Can't say I've ever seen someone like you before. You some kind of elf or something. So not an elf. Okay. Anyway, to business. Hold out your hand. I want to show you something. Go on. Take this ring. It's lucky. Call it. Heads or tails.
this is. See? That's the kind of luck you get from one of my lucky rings. I've got more where that came from. Real cheap, too. Interested? Hey, not so loud. You caught me. All right. They're not lucky rings. I'm just trying to earn money for my family. My father left and my mother, she's so sick. I wish I had better things to sell than trinkets, but it's all I have. Thank you, that means so much. That's what I got. You suddenly feel something moving against your back and turn. go right now she's a thief hell spawn and you will wait for Korga's judgment now get back oh let me through Radrashem or I'll rip your damn throat out <gasps> and I'll show you its claws. A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You. Apparently, Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. Can it be a Git Yankee? Oh, what a delight. If I was less educated, I presume to ask what you're doing on the Sword Coast. my first, my friend. With a curious mind and a good pair of walking shoes, one makes many an acquaintance. Though at present my curiosity lies elsewhere than the vagaries of the children of Gith. You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Glory. Now then, how would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Size, nature, distinguishing qualities? You search your mind, successfully recalling various details of goblin behavior. Goblins were of a rare jam-colored hue and wielded magic blowguns. And the dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Witnesses failed to notice the obvious dragon. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the absolute when they fell upon the gates? They did, didn't they? Oh, oh curious. Oh, curious indeed. I've interrogated one. A captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, Maglaviet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! Never you mind. 
I'm on my way to their camp as we speak. I always knew my studies in Gukliak would come to some use. My friend, every story benefits from a dragon. Until we meet again. No, I'm moments away from a grisly death. At the hands of this bloody song! I can't... Nothing fits, you know? True. And when you finally perfect a song, there's nothing like it. But when you're stuck, and it's just getting worse, oh. Hmm. It can't hurt. I have her. I have an extra loot, if you want. My teacher, Lihala. She loved dancing. Had two left feet, mind. I remember waking up one night on the road and seeing her dancing beneath the stars, a huge smile on her face. Thinking of it now, my heart hurts. And my words just seem to crumble like ash. Wait. Words of mine will turn to ash. That's perfect. Words of mine will turn to ash when you pull the last light down. Yes! Yes! Smile and pain will fade away Words of mine will 
Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. That's the first time I've played since Lihala died. My teacher. She was playing her lute. We didn't hear the gnolls coming. There was so much blood. Uh, I can still smell it. She'd yell at me for that clunky verse and make me play till my fingers were raw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Finish the Weeping Dawn for her. I've a long way to go, but thank you. Uh, I needed this. We meet again, as predicted. I shall be here in my camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. Be assured, it is not by choice. A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. A matter of coin. Then I shall wait here patiently until it is acquired. This Blade of Frontiers is truly Shellac. The idealist do-gooder, the benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset, his pursuit of valor, not so much. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each creche contains a safest purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Or you simply weren't listening. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. Now I have seen you enlightened, I will report your progress to Vlakith herself once I ascend. I was trained on Kreshkalir, among the tears of Saluna. Of this place, I know all too little. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it, and she was planning to return. One of the Archdevil's Ariel's own, Chaos Incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. 
I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking, the damage she might be doing. A powerful friend with a keen interest in... privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. All right. Anything more we should discuss? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. Tiny grooves spider across the ice surface. It resembles a sending stone used to confer with distant contacts. A sending stone? <laughs> Nothing so special, I assure you. His breathing quickens, his jaw tenses. Will is keeping something from you. A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds. Secrets half revealed. What are you? Something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. Your right eye vibrates, and a woman's voice echoes in your head. I have a sweet tooth, and devils on the menu. Beyond the voice, you find only shadow. A piece of Will's mind locked away from intruders. Keep out of my mind. I told you, the eyes are rock, nothing more. And that's the end of it. <laughs> I've come to know a fair few village clerics, but none with the skill to pull these worms from our heads. From what I understand, there's a healer called Nettie in the grove. Perhaps she's got the talent. We should pay her a visit. That's the spirit. Listen. Don't you hear it? It's so peaceful. No, no. It's just a bit of water. I only want to listen. Just a little closer. Everything's gonna be fine once I get there. It's 
No. Yes. I mean, I don't know. Th that's what the voice said. I almost got to the nest, but the singing. I need to get back. Mole will be so mad. <sighs> Wait, um, you should meet Mole. She'll be grateful you helped me. Find a boy called Donnie. Tell him you want to see the dragon's lair. Have you lost your senses, Gorga? Release her. She stole the idol of Sylvanus. She must pay the price. We will imprison the thief under guard of my serpent. When we cast out the rest, she may join them. Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out the rest. Girl, you mean parasite. She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. Very well. She may go. Break your word, and my serpent shall feed. Sif, sif, deal it to me! <laughs> Out, thief. My grace has its limits. <laughs> it hurts. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin... Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Tila pierce it. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. Quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Positive. You can trust me on that. We've been through quite a lot, with likely more to come. Care to narrow it down a little? Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Find a way to rid ourselves of these things. Personally, I think finding this Halsin is our best bet. If we're truly desperate, we can try to convince that goblin gut in assisting us. As for this gift crash, well, if your kind can actually save us, I stand to be corrected. I suppose we'd go our separate ways. Not a slight on your company, of course. Perhaps, perhaps not. If we do survive, we'll have separate lives to return to. I need to get to Baldur's Gate. There's someone waiting for me there. Someone I have to reach. As soon as possible. Let's just say it's a very personal, very private acquaintance. There's no story. None that you're entitled to hear, anyway. Just 
Forget you ever saw it. Must we? No harm in a little mystery, don't you think? I should hope not. Have you ever heard the people who want to talk about themselves? I'm doing you a favor. <laughs> Sweet of you, but don't worry. I'm sure you'll get to know me just fine by traveling together. No need for interrogations just yet. Thank you. I'm sure we'll get along perfectly well. Fine. What's on your mind? I don't think I've ever had a confidant quite like you. And if I have, I can't remember them. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Monster? Too kind. A demon, more like. Ah. You don't see a monster. You just look at me through one's eyes. You are like the devils. Where they tread, chaos follows. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. The rite of thorns. It is the Tree Father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the great vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Sevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. Then they soon know the sting of my venom. Get out. We have no more business. You did well to speak up for the girl. That snake is fickle. A tragedy prevented. Well seen. Well spotted. We've let a snake replace our leader. Master Halsin. Perhaps goblin caught. Perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Korga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damned ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. Ah, I see. You will find her deeper in the caves. Would you? I would give anything to see Halsin return home. Sylvanus's blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Halsin is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. I see you. Just give me a moment. There is Medica. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? I do what I can. For most folks, that's enough. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. A tadpole? A mind flayer 
Tartar Pool. That's a serious condition. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Seems so. Gave Master Halson a right start. It's why he joined the adventurers on their expedition. To find out what was happening. A pity you got me instead of him. He understands these things. Studied them. Still, we have options. You don't have to be here for this. No, I'll stay. I'd rather know exactly what you're up to. All right. Let's see what we can do. Of course. Now, tell me what's been happening. Any symptoms? Strange events? Victims can identify each other. Not that the others know they're victims, of course. How'd you pick up the parasite? Halson was desperate to find where all this was happening. A mind flare ship? But Master Halson was sure. Look. You've been straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. You're dangerous. If you transform here, we're all dead. But you seem like a good soul. You deserve a chance to save yourself. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. The thorn? Coated in a fatal toxin. It was a last resort, in case I couldn't trust you. I don't have a cure. Only a way out. I'm sorry for misleading you, but I had to be sure you weren't a threat before I told you everything. Now, do I have your word or not? I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never once saw a mind flare infection. Then suddenly, there's dozens of you. Maybe more. Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Because you should all be changing. There should be a small army of mind flares out there. But you're not. Weird powers aside, you seem perfectly normal. Mind flayers reproduce by infecting someone with their parasite. Seven gruesome days later, the victim transforms and a new mind flayer is born. The thing in your skull, though? It's different to anything in our records. It's one of their worms, for sure. But this one gives you powers. Telepathic connections. And it doesn't turn you into one of them. Not yet, anyhow. Could be. But there's a lot we don't know. Infected, folks like you, have been converging on an old temple of Saluna. And I've no idea why. When Master Halson heard the adventurers were heading that way, he saw a chance to get answers. Joined on the spot. Whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. I've sent birds to find him, but the place is rotten with goblins. And if my birds can't get close, what chance do I have? You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean. They won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. And perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? Thank you. It would mean everything to the Grove. To me. I wish I could tell you more. 
But only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. And Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there. And if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. Finally, some good fortune. Come morning, we know what to do. The sooner we find the druid house in, the better. I can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? Really? I'd just kill you. Anyway, get some rest. Try not to dream about tying me up. You know, I've been thinking, reflecting on what tomorrow might bring. When we find the druid, will he know how to bring the worm under control? Will this little adventure of ours be over? Good. I don't want you to run off just yet. You're quite the ally, after all. Traversing Avernus, surviving the crash, surviving everything that's followed. I'm not easily impressed by people, but you're stronger than I gave you credit for. Aren't you just? Uh, was I? I just... I just need to get some air. Clear my head. I'll see you later, I'm sure. Sleep tight. A fine evening, don't you think? The moonlight shines warmly on us. The breeze caresses our faces. Hideous. All of it. Would that I were doing battle up there, among the tears. I see naught but cowards cowering in their groves and grottos. Flowering meadows and fecund soil have softened their minds and muscles. They rely on strangers' swords when they should be forging their own. Yes. Rocky bodies named after a false goddess. Look above. Watch the moon cross the sky. The tears follow behind it. Rocky bodies tumbling through the sea of night. One of them is my crash. Clear. Only. My entire clutch battled beholders within the eye of the sky's tunnels. We infiltrated a Neogi spelljammer and laid waste to its crew. The tears span Toril's sky. There is more to the realm than this grassy pebble, Ken. But enough of this. You are wasting your resting time. Come dawn, we resume our search for a crash. A tingle runs through your head and down to your feet. Ah, there it is. That shiver. Our little brainworms have made fast friends, it would seem. How do you feel? <laughs> Surprising is just the word, isn't it? Before the Elithid's unscheduled surgery, I'd felled hundreds of beasts and a fair few fiends. The tadpoles weakened me, suppressed greater talents, but beyond that, I've showed no signs of turning. No nausea, no pain, not even a hot flash. Perhaps the worm's vat was poisoned. Perhaps we're uncommonly fit. Or perhaps the tadpoles are merely on holiday. We could conjecture all night. I suppose the why doesn't matter so much as the what next. And that answer is plain as the horns on a war devil's head. We get these things out. Let's get some rest. Dawn comes sooner than we think.
scare me like that again, and I'll feed you to a knoll. Mom, I'm fine. Stop it. Our little hellion told us what happened. Thank you. Don't know what we'd do without her. Likewise. Arabella? Thank you. For helping me. Hmm. He stares right past you, as if you're invisible. Or boring. He nods, then reaches for a concealed hatch. His eyes flicker to yours for an instant, then away, as if it hurts to look at you. You came! I have... here! Mole said I should thank you properly for the harpies, so I wrote you a story. It's about you. I hope you like it. Well, look who's come to visit. My kids say you've been busy since you got here. Messing with our business, yeah? You scared the life out of little Silphy. Now, you're going to pay for it. Fine. You get one more chance. We're done here. Get lost! Damn! Goblins! Like the sight of blood, do you? Thought you'd have had your fill at the gate. Might be more blood spilled yet if Zevlor starts in on the lectures again. Finally, someone who ain't got horns where their good sense should be. We expected a soft job. Something to test the new lad, maybe, but not a bloody goblin nest. Most would have turned tail at the sight, but not Liam, no. He charged him, the stupid bastard. No. He must have thought we were following. Always the optimist was Liam. Hope they cut him down quick before he saw we were gone. Good to be back behind the walls, have to say. For as long as that lasts. If it ain't the fearless goblin slayer, you sure you want to be seen with me? I ain't exactly popular with this lot. Half my crew are full of holes. Now I'm gonna take the blame for leading the goblins here and losing track of the bloody druid. They chased us, all the way from the ruins we were poking around in. Aye. His name's Halsin. And if he's still alive, he'll be cursing the day he laid eyes on me. We've got a contract. To track down some relic. And he wanted in on the job. Eyes lit up when he heard about it. Didn't work out, though. Goblins got him when we were turning tail. He's either digging latrines or boiling in a cook pot by now. Job's all yours, if you got death wish. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay goblos for a relic supposedly buried round these parts. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. If I knew that, I wouldn't be back here with half my crew gone. But look, if you're itching to meet Kellenvor, I won't stop you. It's called the Night Song. Supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you the map and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own todger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. 
All I've got's the contract. It'll show you where we turn back. If you feel like dying. <laughs> Don't thank me. I'll be well on my way to Baldur's Gate when you die. Ugh. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. If I'd got that stupid idol, I'd be a hero. Least I tried. No one else was doing anything. They were talking when the druids were getting ready to throw us out. Why can't we just stay in until it's safe? I'm only gonna ask you one more time, boy. Hand over my locket. I don't have your ugly locket. I've never seen it before. Hand it over or I'll slap the teeth out of your head. I said I don't have it. Maybe he dropped it running away from those big, scary goblins. You little spit tug freak! Probably not. It's just tin in class. Here! Take it! Not sure why you care so much about it, honestly. Scram! Before I give you something to care about! Kids lucky you were here. And we'll have a dog, right? They don't allow them in Baldur's Gate. Cats, though? A little orange cat. And a house with a little door, so that it can come and go as it pleases. What'll we name it? I like... Jeffrey. Small. Whiskers. Meow, meow. You know, cat. Well, they're excellent mouses. And their little faces are so cute. I am what now? <laughs> you heard them, love. Look, whoever you are, whatever you're into, you'll find it in Baldur's Gate. I only have eyes for this one here. Bloody teeth everywhere. I met your friend. Ready to go? Happily, lead the way. Let me strike true. Tormented! <laughs> 
My, you startled me. I, uh, it's miles away. No special reason, really. I was just practicing an incantation. What can I say? She's... She's Mistra. I can't quite describe it. The need I sometimes feel to see her. To draw the filaments of fantasy into existence. No sculpture or painting could ever do her justice. Only the fabric that she herself is. And embodies. The weave. Mistra is all magic. And as far as I'm concerned, she is all creation. So you understand. Magic is... my life. I've been in touch with the Weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Is it the same for you? I can show you what I mean by reaching into the weave together. Then follow my lead. Now you. feeling like a kind word and a kind touch at the same time it's warm and comfortable excellent now repeat after me athran mistra ril kantrak eo Suddenly, the scent of rose water and a sense of well-being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony. As true as you can.
You see, or is it sense, the presence of a woman. The woman who hovered over Gail's palm. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss. Then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. You are nestled in the cup of Mistra's hand. <gasps> Look at that. We're channeling the weave. How does it feel? You're hard to please, aren't you? The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. The weave evaporates. And as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh. There it goes. How easily things slip away from us. No matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Take your... Can't give up now. I should speak up. Oh, thank you, thank you. I thought I was gonna die down here. It's my fault. I thought I'd given them the slip, but they followed me through the tunnel back there. I must tell the others what happened. I step careful. There are traps in these tunnels. And thank you again. Never break a promise, unless there's something in it for me. I'll introduce you to my whole tribe and put in a good word for you. See you at the camp. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I, I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. Your sword. Wait. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. <laughs> Useless. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenner. New recruits. Yours to shepherd. Protect them. They are a true soul. Mind them. They will. They. They. Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're... You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother. He was chosen, like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. What? Are you... are you testing us? A true soul, like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. You speak with her voice. Your words are her command. She grants you the power to enforce her will. And when the time comes, the true souls... You will rule. Please. Any supposed new god would have an uphill battle. I'm sorry, true soul. I only repeated what I thought I knew. It seems the Absolute still has a great deal to teach me. We know that all too well. But the Absolute sent us here. We're looking for fugitives. Survivors from that ship that crashed farther west of here. 
We don't know what they look like, but anyone who survived that crash is bound to be injured. That's enough to get us started. The Absolute wants them found. At any cost. An oil bear. It had him on the ground before we had a chance to react. We managed to drag him away, but the beast's claws had already done their work. I told Edward not to look in that cave. It was filthy with oil bear tracks. I don't know any druids. What? And... and just... leave Ed? I suppose... I suppose he'd want us to go on. Find a way to honor his sacrifice. May the Absolute guide us. They spoke of the Absolute. So Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. its host's memories go to waste. The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you, strengthen you. wake of its heavy footsteps before you see it. An owl bear, its beaked face looming out of the darkness. Albert's one good eye flicks away for a moment. You follow its glance and see an Albert cub. The Albert stares, then sharply inhales your scent. It sits back, its eyes still fixed on you. A silent ultimatum. You can leave now or step closer and die. The owlbear growls deep in its feathered chest. You had your chance. Let my enemies fall. from you to his dead mother. A single strike will end his suffering.
You watch speechless as the cub begins to eat his mother. The cub has a fighting chance now. That, or we've just prolonged its misery. The dog lowers his hackles, his head tilted inquisitively. Convinced that you're harmless, he turns his attention back to the corpse. Around his neck is a collar etched with a name, Scratch. With a deep, heartbroken whine, the dog bows his head. The dog whimpers nervously, as if to urge you on. The dog looks at his owner with sad eyes. He does not move. The dog sniffs your hand, his tail swung low in understanding. He knows how to find you. One horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. <sighs> well, I'll be God's damned. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Bloody right. An honor to be chased by the Blade of Frontiers, but I... Ugh. A great heat roars through you. Her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The blood war. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. What was that? Evidence. Proof that you're a devil, a gladiator in the Archdevil Zariel's army. I can explain, but it's a whole situation. If you just hear me out... Another vision. Karnak's blade raised, slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Her rage and desperation seep into you. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. She's trying to trick us. Don't believe her lies. You saw the truth. I never wanted to serve Zariel. I was enlisted in her army against my will. Forced to fight, and fight I did. When I saw an opportunity to get away, I took it. Finally home. Or near it anyway. You served her. That's enough to damn you. You don't know what you're saying. You're asking me to trust a devil. You know monsters, right? Better than anyone. Look into my eyes. Can't you see I'm not what you think? Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I'm Karlak. But you already knew that. And you are... Well met, soldier. Nice to meet a friendly around here. It's been tough going so far. 
I may not be a devil, but I can put the Blade's reputation to work. How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? Little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. I was good. Really good. It turns out, I've got a knack for killing demons. That made me a valuable asset. Zariel, the Archdevil herself, made me as her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there, but devils don't like to lose their assets. <laughs> Zariel liked it so little. She sent a bunch of goons, so-called paladins of tear, to take me back. Problem is, I'm not going. Yes. They cornered me outside the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. Then we can work on evicting this parasite and take Faerun by their short hairs. Sound good? I'd hug you if it wouldn't scorch your skin off. Ah, uh, hang on though. Looks like you've got enough backup at your side. Not sure there's room for me. I'll catch up with you when it's time to camp for now. But don't get to any of the fun stuff without me. Got it? You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. I can say only this. Karlak's not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to their throats. What's that supposed to mean? The truth will out before you know it. One night soon, when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. You're not in any danger, I promise. I can't say the same about me. Beast reeks of brimstone and offal. <clears throat> Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You watch with cold realization. This isn't the end of one life, but the start of another. Gnolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids can spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. against her skull. She yelps, then goes still. As the life fades from her eyes, the knoll within her dies too, stillborn.
guy's eyes. Another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. Tell you, just stay back, all right? They were on the road to Boulder's Gate, near the mountain pass. It saw us, for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly, straight to the other side, and I just, I just ran. Now get away from me! I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here, or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? You saw what they were willing to do to a child just for trying. It's Corga's influence. Without her twisting things, I believe the druids might see sense. A low thought. But I'd be lying if I said I hadn't considered it. But the druids would slaughter us. We'd have to get close to Korga, within striking distance. I can't manage that. But they've already let you pass once. You're taking a risk for us. We'll see that you're rewarded. I'm still hoping Korga can be swayed from this madness. But if not, leaders need to make tough decisions. We do what we must. Used to think the goblins would kill us the second we set foot outside. But after hearing what you did at the gate... Well, I still think they'll kill us. But at least we can put up a fight. <laughs> there's optimism, and then there's stupid, hun. Plenty of us fell to monsters already. I don't see the rest of us lasting long out there. But if you're so sure we will, why not put a little gold on the line? Excellent. And since I ain't one to leave a debt unpaid, that means we're destined to meet in Borders Gate. Looking forward to it. You! Saw you fighting those slimy bastards. Fancy a bowl? Best to fill your belly now, while we still can. <laughs> That's a good attitude. Here, have more. We'll need every bit of strength to make it to Baldur's Gate. Trust me. Ah, oh, if it isn't the talk of the camp. It's a rare day when I see one of you lot about. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! You look more green than yellow, Ethel. Are your heart cold, feverish? Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. Sorry, love. I just lose the run of myself sometimes. I must say, though, you're looking mighty peaky. Are you all right? Oh, I've seen it all. I once had a fella who'd been caught dabbling with a dryad. The wife was none too pleased and introduced him to a pot of boiling oil. But worry not. I fixed him up, and depending on the lighting, he looks good as new. My point is, whatever ails you, I promise I've seen worse. 
My, she sounds positively demented. I love it. Let's tell her everything. What is it, Petal? What's wrong? As you recount your adventure, Auntie Ethel nods along, her eyes wide. You poor pet! My heart goes out to you, truly! I see no sign of a tentacle yet, but that could change in an instant. You need help. Serious help. I've ne'er a potion or lotion here that could do it, but... Yes, I may have something at home. Petal, the things I've collected would blow your pretty little mind. Bracelets that hold the power of ten men. Mirrors that capture the soul. I'll be heading home soon. Here, let me mark it on your map. Just in case. Now, do you need anything? I have a few odds and ends for sale. Hey, bother. Be careful on the road. I'd hate if something happened to you. Take care, Petal. 